Good afternoon and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. In today's video we are going to do kind of a vlog style like a mini vlog video today because I worked on a project yesterday and I want to show you guys what I did and we're going to kind of do some fun things with that today and I have other things going on today as well and I want to show you guys some things and chat a little bit so I am just going to do this in a vlog style video so make sure that you like and subscribe and let's go ahead and get started with the video. So my kitchen has been a mess for two days now and it's not the kind of mess where I haven't cleaned it for two days. I cleaned all of this yesterday, but when you spend all of your time at home and you have a family that eats a lot of food, you end up with this all the time. So I've got to do this <laughs> before we can get on to the fun stuff today. But I also just made some banana muffins because everybody has decided they don't like bananas anymore and the bananas were just really sad and turning black so I made some banana muffins with a recipe that I've never used before so I'm gonna go get the kiddos and let them eat while I do dishes I'm gonna try this muffin first before I start on all these dishes It's really good. I'll um, show y'all the recipe in a minute. But does anybody else feel like every time you make homemade food, like, okay, I like making homemade food. And like, it's so satisfying to make homemade food. But the thing is, you work so hard on it and it's gone in like a day, two days. So for instance, I made a loaf of sourdough bread and it was gone in like a day and a half. And then like the other day I made some homemade donut holes because I've been working on like doing, like creating my own recipes, not this, but I've been working on perfecting a chocolate chip chip, chocolate chip chip, a chocolate chip cookie recipe. And I perfected that, I believe. And so I moved on to sour cream donuts and I practiced on donut holes and I made a whole batch. The whole first dozen were raw in the middle because I had not timed my frying. So I had to throw all those out. And so the whole second batch were good. They were good, they weren't perfect. I'm still working on them, but anyways, <laughs> they were gone. I made them that night and then by the next morning, I ate the last three that were left the next morning and they were gone. So I feel like when you make homemade food, it's like you spend all this time on it and then it's gone so quickly. But I mean, I guess that's a good thing. I mean, it is made to be eaten, but it's like, I do all this work and it's gone. It doesn't last at all. I just think it's funny.
I just laid the kids down for their nap and I want to show you what I did yesterday and I'm going to tell you a little bit of a backstory because this cabinet, this hutch, I don't know if I've actually showed it on YouTube before. You might have seen it in passing but I don't think I talked about it um, but it was red and my mom gave it to me. She's had it for years. It's been a lot of different colors. When she got it, it was white and then she painted it teal at one point and she also painted it red and I did not do any sanding. So this is a very imperfect paint job, but I have painted it. Finally, I have painted it. And what inspired me to paint it is I went to an estate sale on Friday at a very, very beautiful house. And this was a great estate sale. I ended up coming out with way more stuff than I intended to. <laughs> and I'm going to show you some of that stuff today. But I bought this beautiful teacup. And I'm going to show you the cup. It was $4. And I want to display it somewhere. And you can see behind me this corner cabinet over here. Um, it's, it's pretty full. And so I wanted to be able to display really pretty teacups and stuff in my new hutch between the two. And so today, since I've painted it and it's dry, I am going to reorganize all of my pretty fancy things. I'm going to let y'all see all of my little things. We're going to do a little tour of all my pretty little fancy things and I'm going to organize the new hutch. But anyways, I am notorious for putting projects off. I have great ideas and plans for all these projects that I want to complete. And I have a tendency to start things and then get distracted with something else. Uh, as is my sewing machine that has been staring at me for a couple of months because I have not done any new projects and I really want to. It's just I'm having a hard time finding the time for everything that I want to have time for. But I'm also notorious for just putting projects off. And this hutch I have had for four months, I think. And the red does not match with anything in my house. And it really needed to be painted. But this cup, because I wanted to display this teacup so bad, this teacup inspired me to just go on, bite the bullet, and paint it. So I'm going to show you guys what it looks like. Here she is. Like I said, she is not perfect. And anyway, because I just about ran out of paint, um, but you can see the green here, it matches the green over there, matches the green in this shelf, and then it also matches the green over there. The kitchen is still dirty, so just ignore it, but it matches over there. Um, and I about ran out of the green paint, which is why I left this part white and the inside is painted on the rest of it, um, but it really doesn't bother me that much. Um, so. I am going to go ahead and go through some of my fancy things.
so I am very happy with how this turned out and I'm gonna give you guys a little tour of what we have here on top um, this is a tea set that my mom got me for my birthday about it wasn't this year it was last year and this set came from Amazon it's linked in my Amazon storefront if you're interested in it that link is always in the description and then these plates okay I went back through on the estate sale on Friday and I went back through before we left just to see if there was anything else that I wanted and there was a set of six of these plates for four dollars I believe four or five dollars and I just love the colors the colors are just so just pretty and feminine and just perfect like English cottage type I might have that wrong, but I just think they're so pretty. Um, and so I did not know what I was going to do with them because I have a lot of pretty little cake plates, but I think they look so gorgeous lining the shelves. They really pop against the green color in the background. And then all of these teacups are different. Um, and these little saucers do not go with these teacups. I didn't have saucers for them, so I just placed them on those little plates. But I have this one. And then I have this one, matching set that my mom got me. And then this is another one with a saucer that doesn't match, but both of this one and this one came from thrift stores. And then here we have the pretty cup from the estate sale. And then this one, my husband bought me, we went to Mount Mary for our three year anniversary. I was heavily pregnant with Cade and we were going through a bit of a financial rough patch so we didn't really do anniversary gifts that year we just kind of went to mount airy for the day and in an antique store we saw this pretty little cup and i was like oh it says happy anniversary <laughs> and so he bought it for me and i just i will always treasure it and inside we have i don't know what the safety pin's doing in there but that's a couple of rose petals from some flowers that he gave me not for our anniversary that year but for other things then I have this one that also came from a thrift store. And then these plates are different. These are part of a different china set. Um, I don't have the whole set. I just have six of these cake plates. The other three are on the top of the hutch underneath the teapot. And then I have this little sugar bowl that I actually had listed for sale at one point and nobody bought it. So I decided to keep it. And then I have these little glass serving dishes they're not very big so they're like for jelly or like a cheese ball or something but i think they're so pretty and i think they finish out the bottom shelf really nicely now moving on to this cabinet i wanted to put my pretty glassware in this cabinet so i kind of rearranged a little bit and i think i'm happy with it maybe not 100 percent. we'll see but um, these blue glasses came from the Pioneer Woman collection. I got them as a wedding gift. Um, they were some that I had registered for and I love them. I'm obsessed with them. Um, and then I've just got a crystal um, sugar, crystal sugar bowls. And then this set, I think I showed on here before, I have a, like a big tea set that I bought for 50 bucks at an antique store. It's got plates, well, it's got two dinner plates, a bunch of cake plates, some bowls, got lots of teacups and saucers and the teacups it's all in the same pattern but there's like three different kinds of teacups um those little plates that I had that were non-matching saucers for those teacups it came from the set as well um but I've got the sugar bowl teapot cream dish and then I just put a few of the teacups the rest of the set is down here in the bottom of the cabinet um and then down here my friend gave me these like pinkish purple water glasses um she gave me those when i got married i think she got them from an antique store and then i bought these little hopefully you can tell they're pink they're like really pretty pink um they're almost like ice cream cups i bought these at an antique store a set of two for like a dollar two dollars something like that i love pink glass i love colored glass in general um and then down here in the bottom i just have some excess stuff i have like i said the rest of that tea set i have a couple other little teacups that didn't fit i have some norman rockwell plates and cups and stuff because i used to collect norman rockwell i don't really 
buy it anymore because I have a lot of it. One day I hope to have a place that I can display it that kind of goes cohesively, but I don't have anywhere to display it right now that kind of would match with the rest of the house. So it just stays down here. I'm hanging on to it. Um, and then I have a couple of glasses. I had a set of three of these and I broke some. <laughs> I broke one of them. And then I have this, which is a Norman Rockwell glass. And then there's some crystal candlesticks that I really need to find a place for. Um, but all of this just stays down here. And this is my child proofing mechanism, mechanism right there. <laughs> And then just a few random things that couldn't fit. I've got these two plates. Um, I've got this electric tea kettle. I've got this cup that I adore that's got little feet on it. I've got this creamer dish that I was really hoping to be able to put over there, um, but it's not working over there. So I've got to find a place for that. I've got this little dish and then I've got this plate here. And I'd like to create a plate wall with a bunch of my pretty plates because I have other pretty plates. I'd like to do a plate wall maybe on that wall over there. Ignore my messy bedroom. Um, but I might would like to do a plate wall over here on this wall at some point. I'm not sure yet, but that's why I'm holding on to these. I also wanted to show y'all a couple of these books that I bought at the estate sale. There's this one, um, which has beautiful pictures in it and lots of really cute little recipes. This book, um, I flipped through it the other day and it's like different teas that you would have at like different ends. So like, um, let me find what I'm looking for. Like a butler's tea is the very first one. And then there's like one in here, the Alora Ashley tea. If you have looked through any Laura Ashley books, they're absolutely beautiful. The interiors are beautiful. This is the Laura Ashley tea, um, English country tea. The, the photographs are just beautiful. Um, and like the recipes look really good. I'm gonna try some of these. There's one in here for a wedding tea. Um, I just, I like tea time. I'm not the biggest like actual tea drinker. I drink coffee, but like I love having a tea time when I'm able to actually sit down and have a tea time. I love it. So I love this book. This book, this book is just the most darling book. It makes me want to open a bed and breakfast. And I opened this book up and I don't know who Kathy is, but this letter was in the very front page um, and it's a, it's addressed to a Kathy. I don't know if Kathy is the person that owned the house that the estate sale was being done out of. I'm thinking maybe she was, but I'm not sure. But the date on the letter is November 3rd, 96. And I'm gonna read you this letter because I just think it's the sweetest thing. Hi, Kathy, happy birthday. I've had this book since last week, but I couldn't break my streak of never getting you things on time. You wouldn't know it was really from me. It was nice to talk with you today. You sound happy. Things here are good. I love this time of year. It's so pretty here. I'm feeling very at home here and I'm glad. I wasn't sure Portland would be where I would want to live, but I really like it. How's Georgia? Does it feel like home? I always kind of think of you as being there temporarily. So we're finally talking about a family. We're talking about getting a kitten. We'd like a puppy, but we don't have too much room for a big dog. So are you online with a computer? We finally jumped into the electric world and bought one. If you are, send me your email address and I'll write you a note. So about this book, it was one of Michelle's collection given to her by one of her best friends. When I saw it, I thought of you and your plans to have your own B&B. We haven't talked about it very much. I hope it doesn't make you uncomfortable. If it does, I'll understand. She always liked you. She'd ask about you every once in a while. So how's Carter doing? Long after you became a bar baronic, I'm not sure what that word is. She liked your determined style. I hope you like it. I thought you could use it to travel around doing research. You can stay at each one and see what you like and don't like. There is even one in Ashland, Oregon. Well, I've got to go. You and Tom take care with love, Karen and Paul. And I just think that is the sweetest thing in the world. I cannot ever 
get rid of this book and I can never take this out. Let me see. What's well, looks like flowers, but I can never get rid of it. So this book um, is a bunch of recipes submitted from different inns and bed and breakfasts around the country. See Country Inn at Princeton in Massachusetts. And it's just so beautifully done. I just think this whole book is just so beautifully done. It's, I found this when I was at the estate sale, we were in the butler's pantry and I was looking through a shelf and I managed to, to stumble across these books and I immediately grabbed them because I just think they are just so beautiful and I'm in a baking mood. So I'm going to be baking a lot of stuff out of this book. I wish I could go to estate sales more often because there is something about an estate sale that is just far superior to antique shopping, thrift shopping, flea market, like anything. It's like just far superior yard selling. And it's not necessarily because of the prices because you can get better prices sometimes at thrift stores and yard sales. It's, well, first of all, I love going to like actually get to go inside of these beautiful houses. This house that the state sale on Friday was, it was like built in like 1894, I, I believe. I might be wrong, but I know it was the 1800s um, because I heard somebody mention that at the estate sale. It's a very historic house um, in our area. It's beautiful. It's two story. It's got this beautiful, I don't know what you call it. I used to call it a tower when I was little. It looks like, um, I think it's like a bay window type thing, but it's like built it looks like a tower. It looks like a castle tower, but I'm not sure what the proper name for that is. It's beautiful. The woodwork inside the house is beautiful. It's got tall ceilings. It's got pocket doors, beautiful wood floors. It's just, it's fantastic. And so getting to go inside these beautiful houses, but then too, the idea of, you know, getting to walk through somebody's life almost, getting to look at the things that they collected and the house that they so carefully curated and all of the things that they loved. Like, it's just something about it. It's sad in a way. It's like a bittersweet feeling. It's like, it's sad in a way, but then you're also excited because you get to take a piece of it home. And I look at estate sales almost like, not that I don't go because I love old stuff and I buy the stuff that I genuinely like when I'm there, but I also see it as kind of a rescue mission because like, for instance, okay, there was a, a estate sale at the end of my street. Beautiful house, not a big house by any means, but just a beautiful little modest house. I've always loved the house. I loved the lady that lived there. I met her once. And the house um, had a room, a bedroom that was full of books. And there was one particular old book in there that was her, I think, young lady's handbook. And it had, you know, a note written by her teacher in it. And it was like from the 1930s. And I took that and I was like, I can't not take this because I feel like I'm rescuing it. Because if I don't take it, more than likely this is going to end up in Goodwill because it's not going to sell. And, you know, I know there's other people that are sentimental like me, but I'm just like, I'm rescuing it. I went to another one once and there was this extremely old, extremely beat up teddy bear. And... I looked at it and I mean, what was I going to do with this teddy bear? This was when I was still living at home. I didn't have any children and it was really kind of ugly because it was just worn. But I was like, somebody loved that. Like loved it to the point where he's missing an eyeball. And I'm just like, nobody's going to buy this. And I bought it and I still have it. It's in a trunk in Cade's room um, with a bunch of stuff of mine that I'm saving for the kids when they get older. I bought it because I'm like, somebody loved this. Like this was somebody's treasure. And then the other thing is walking through their house and being like, this person had impeccable taste. A lot of times when you go to estate sales that are like um, from older people that have passed away or that have gone to a nursing home, like a lot of older ladies have just exquisite taste their home furnishings, their curtains, their dishes, like everything. I've been to a few different sales where I could tell that the lady that lived there had absolute amazing taste. Um, there was another one where there was a lady, her name was Eloise and she passed away and her home was so beautiful and just like 
the decoration was immaculate. She had wallpaper, she had beautiful furniture. It was just gorgeous. And like with the lady up here at the end of my street, she had amazing taste. She had the most beautiful china. She had beautiful glassware. My little cake tin that I put the muffins in earlier, I got that from her house. I got my percolator from her house. I got some clothes from her house. She had wonderful style. My pink pantsuit, if you've seen it over on Instagram, and also the pink dress that I took the pictures of with the spring blooms, that came from her house. She had wonderful taste. And so I love, I love estate sales. And I, I told my mom, I was like, I think I would turn over in my grave if my children had an estate sale and let strangers walk through my house and buy all of my stuff that it took me a lifetime to curate. But I want to collect and curate my home to the point where if, God forbid, when I die, my children decide to sell off all my stuff, <laughs> that somebody like me could walk through my house and be like, this lady really created a beautiful home. This lady really had good taste. She really collected a lot of beautiful things. She must have loved beautiful things because that's what I do. I like walk through their house and I like put together in my mind what this person must have been like and like how carefully and thoughtfully they curated their house and their wardrobe and their jewelry and all these things. It took them a lifetime. There's a bluegrass song. And if I can remember the name of it and find it, I will link it down below. But this song reminds me of estate sales because she says in the song, she's talking about a lady who, who passes away. And the song goes, everything she owned was scattered to the wind, sold at auction on a sunny autumn day. It took a lifetime to find all the things she wanted and a day for all those hands to come and carry them away. And every time I hear that song, I'm like, that's like an estate sale. <laughs> like, And that's another thing. It's like, I went to a estate sale where this couple had been all around the world. They had things. In fact, let me show you something. This box right here is one thing that I got from their house. It's like this beautiful carved box. It's got Chinese writing on the bottom. I've got a bobby pin in here. That's all I've got in here, but... It's beautiful and I know that it was a souvenir that they got from another country because they had tons of stuff from all over the world. I think India, Africa, um, places in Asia. It was amazing. And I'm like, it took them their whole life to create this collection of things. And I'm not in any way hating on the family if they wanted to sell it. Um, I just personally am like my children, I, I want, my children to like old things like I do. And I would like to think that they would, you know, want to take my things and keep them in their own house. If you hear Kate, he's playing in his room. But I would like to think that they would like take my things and use them in their own house. But I know a lot of times the family don't have room for everything and they take what they want and they sell the rest, which, you know, I'm not, I'm not making fun of that. But I'm saying like, it took them their whole life to collect all of this stuff and everything they they brought home was like a piece from a memory or a place they'd been or something that they thought was beautiful and it just it touches me it touches my soul in a way that I is just indescribable and I feel like these people that I have collected things from their home from estate sales I feel like in a way um, they were kindred spirits to me. And that's a long rambling way to talk about estate sales, but I hope you guys get my point. But I just think, I, I just think and feel so many things when I go to estate sales.
So tonight's dinner is going to be an experiment. I'm cooking some sausage. I want to make some homemade pasta. I've made homemade pasta one other time, um, but this is an easier recipe. So I'm going to try it. Might be a disaster, but I'm going to try. <laughs> in my video about cooking that I am an experimental cook and that I am not a scientist. I take back the part about not being a scientist because by being an experimental cook, you kind of are a scientist. I just meant I'm not precise, but this is exactly what I'm talking about. So this recipe is not quite working out. So I'm just adding more egg and more flour until it's the right consistency. We're going to see how this does. It, I'm not, it's not looking very promising right now. that you can roll it through that flattens it all the way. And so my pasta, once it cooks, it tends to be really fat. I need one of those attachments that you can put on a KitchenAid because I have a KitchenAid. I just haven't got one yet, but it tastes really good. Okay, supper is done. 
It's really good. Reese is over there eating hers. All it is is hot sausage, spaghetti sauce. I did not make my own because I did not have the tomatoes to make my own. Um, and I don't normally make my own unless I'm making pasta bolognese. Um, but I used this right here, tomato basil. It's really good with the hot sausage. So it's hot sausage, tomato sauce, and the homemade pasta. Like I said, my noodles are too fat. Um, but I've got to get one of those attachments, but they still taste really good. Reese is over there enjoying hers. I hear her lip smacking. I've got to go get Kate up so that he can have some. Brennan's not home yet. But I wanted to encourage you um, because something that has kind of changed the game a little bit for me when it comes to trying new things is not overthinking it. So I'll give you an example. The sourdough starter, I have tried so many times to do a sourdough starter and I just have overthought it and panicked if it looked the least little bit weird. And just, I, I've thrown like four or five sourdough starters out. Um, if I would forget about it, I would just let it die and just forget about it and throw it out. So I started the sourdough process again. I got my active starter and I just kind of treat it casually and don't panic over it and don't worry about it. I stick it in the fridge and then when I'm ready to use it, I take it out and feed it. It's fine. If it looks funny, I just, you okay? I just discard the top part. She's fine. I just discard the top part and then just add flour and water. I don't even anymore. I don't even really measure that much when I add my, um, when I feed it and it's fine. It's thriving. It's bubbly. It makes great food and it worked. And it took me so many tries to get that approach with it, but it works. And ever since I, I did that and I got it to work, I've heard several people say that the way they got their sourdough to work is just treating it casually and not, you know, stressing over it or overthinking it. That's kind of what I did with these pasta noodles. I just kind of tried it and didn't overthink it. I think sometimes you have to just jump into something and just don't think so hard about it. I don't know. It's helped me. Hopefully that will help you. But we've reached the end of the vlog because we've got to get ready for church this evening. I got to get the kids fed and ready. So I hope that you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Bye.